Hello, vlogging here from the illustrious uh, halfway house of Encore Order 2 here in uh, the lovely state of Oklahoma, the poorest state in the nation, where they literally throw you away for possession of marijuana. Uh, similar to Cambodia, uh, yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great, you know, just meth heads everywhere and, and Section 8 and just you just love it you know and um, anyway yeah I got caught with a quarter ounce of marijuana and uh, they put three felonies on my ass so I'm still here and I can't get out yet uh, you know I hope to get out sometime in the next couple months and uh, that'll be a blessing to be honest with you uh, in Dallas, Texas, where I've been raised my entire life, almost all but two years of it, um, I, uh, you know, you get caught with a quarter ounce of marijuana, you're looking at a week in jail, and uh, so I'm looking to get back to there as quickly as possible and forget this place ever existed. Get back to, uh, you know, I've got a job up here in Oklahoma. They want me to live up here. And if it comes down between that and going back to Texas, well, I will be going back to Texas and starting my business back up and forgetting about this hellhole. Because I'm not coming back to the state, you know. Uh, I don't even know if I'll come up here to visit, you know. I got some family members up here. I don't know if I'll even come here to visit them anymore. Because you can just put a little piece of marijuana on somebody and just plant it and then just literally just throw their life away for years. Literally. I mean, this happens all the time. People go to wait prison for years in, in Oklahoma for joints. No, this isn't a joke. This is serious. This actually happens all the time. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say or tell you. This this isn't, you know, this place is, isn't, uh, you know, so much another place as another time. Okay? And uh, and they love it. They love it out here. I mean, they think it's great. You know, they they uh, they know that. You know, I've I've shown the statistics to people, and uh, you know, and they love it. You know, they love it. They they don't care. You know, and I've got pages pages of statistics on drug prohibition. And don't think that I'm just sitting here compiling statistics because I just got in trouble. I've got videos that show where I've had. Uh, information censored on statistical information of drug prohibition where I have linked up to my personal viral videos these statistics and had them disappear on the same day that the view count spiked and made a video on it and this is over a year ago so you can go back and look yourself but here's the fact uh, you know uh, I mean let's just take for example you know Portugal where it, for ages 13 to 15 uh, Marijuana use, uh, drug use actually decreased by 25% after decriminalization, or 16 through 19, 22%. Or how about heroin overdose decreasing by 52%? Or how about HIV infections reported by drug users decreasing by 70%? They don't care. You know, they, they like to say, well, it's a gateway drug. And if you tell them and show them the statistics, they'll still say the same thing. They're absolutely oblivious to, to anything. You know, and that's why it's interesting what Alex Jones said the other day that if an alien showed up and said, you know, I want to take, a, I want to just literally abduct people, people would just show up and say, yes, let's do this right now. I'm going to take and I'm going to show you where the people are. And we're just going to, we're just going to, we're just going to rip them off the face of the earth. And then you'll be called conspiracy theorists for saying that you saw it happen. And, uh, and that's the way it is. And people love it. I mean, they love it. So, you know, and, and then out here, and, uh, you know, and the cops, you're gonna, your lives are going to get ruined, you know. You think that you're exempt from this, and, you know, you're something special. You know, I had a cop the other day, I was in jail, say, no, well, you know, I couldn't get a cast. They took my cast away from me. I walked into jail, I had a, it wasn't a full cast, it was a half cast, it was wrapped up. And, uh, and he said, well, when we're abiding by the ordinances of a paramilitary organization, so I said, you know, it's not par I said, it, well, I said, you are waging war on the population. Oh, we're not waging war. Yeah, you are. More people in prison than China. 
with a billion less population. And we're all supposed to be so worried about China. I'd rather put a bullet in my head. This place is sick. So, I mean, you look at like 1914. I mean, I don't even want to go through the statistics with you. I've gone through the statistics with you. I mean, I've, Albert Einstein went through it with you. Went through prohibition. He didn't say alcohol prohibition. He said the prohibition law. And so I don't need to sit here and explain. But anyways, one of the amazing things that's going on in my life right now. Let's see how far I am in this five minute. Yeah, one of the amazing things going on in my life right now. I just found out this morning that uh, that I'm obligated to take medication because they sent me to so I went to a mental uh, they sent me I went to a hospital uh, to a um, went to a jail and the jail bought, ba bailed me out bonded me out to send me to a mental hospital the reason why is because my family knew the judge and called him personally well, uh, my dad's got a business out here. It's probably worth about $30, $40 million, okay? And so he knows all these people, and he, and he thinks it makes him special to know. Well, I think it's the opposite, but regardless, uh, they aren't anything special, trust me. Um, so they sent me to this mental institution it's it's got a detox wing for people that are pretty much confident and then every once in a while they'll send a retard back there and then you know well you know I asked the doctor you know what's 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 the problem why are you sending these people back here because it's two weeks I spent two weeks in there and uh, he said well uh, because uh, you know he's too cognitive dude eats banana peels and just anyways so this doctor I drank about three cups of coffee that morning, just out, out of boredom, mostly, probably. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I needed help waking up. Maybe I was bored. Who knows? I'm stuck in a mental institution. So, I drank about three cups of coffee. And yeah, I was nervous. I had a $25,000 bond for possession of uh, a quarter ounce of pot. So yeah, I was pretty nervous. And, uh, you know, probably jittery too. And so he said, well, I'm hypomanic. So he puts me on all this medication, I mean a shitload of medication. And I said, I don't want the medication. Well he's gonna send he's gonna kick me out and send me somewhere else. Well if he sends me somewhere else, it's like a month long program, so I'm like, just give me the medication. Okay. I thought that was gonna be a month long program. I've already got a couple days in there, I just get me through this shit. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm already being abducted and kidnapped and enslaved so gangs can run wild, statistically proven fact. I mean, you know, people thought segregation was bad. And now they just rape people off the street and just, and just put them somewhere so a gang can go crazy and drug use can go through the roof. You're getting, you know, people getting literally kidnapped and enslaved. I don't know if that re registers with anyone. That's a big deal. Anyways, that's that's what they do in free countries, though, and so I'm just so happy. You know, some people say we're just too free in America, and I just agree with that. I just totally agree with that. You know, we're just too free. Is what it is. You know, people get raked off into dungeons and enslaved for years and years and years on end, so that gangs can go crazy and drug use can go through the roof. And against the you know advice of Albert Einstein, we're just too free. We're just too free. We're just too free. You know, more people in prison than China, we're just too free, is what it is. So, anyways, um, you know, the fact of the matter is that we're just too fucking free. And, and uh, anyways, uh, so they, uh, so the geniuses put me in a mental institution. Uh, so, you know, and, and I was, you know, blogging on this subject matter before, you know, pretty much daily basis, you know. It had been about a week since I had put a video up before I got arrested for the quarter ounce. But up until that point, I had done about five or six videos over the course of that week. And I wasn't planning on quitting, but... Uh, tell you what. Uh, anyways, 
you know, it just makes sense, you know. You're out there trying to try to stir up some change. I mean, really slam that guy. You know, I mean, come on, man. Put me on a $25,000 bond for a quarter ounce of pot. $25,000. So you're really getting enslaved. And uh, for that much, you know, you know, so we can have more drug use and, you know, crime. Homicide. I mean, homicide's lovely. Forgot to, forgot to mention that. Uh, so, you know, we're just too free here, and, uh, anyways, uh, so now I just found out by the geniuses of this place, and this guy, his, his wife, or, I don't know if it's girlfriend or wife or whatever, got, uh, they gave her a, a urinary analysis while she was, uh, having a child. I don't know, you know, I mean, when the hospitals become a monopoly conglomerate and you don't have competition, then they'll do that, I guess. You know, because if they didn't, then you would probably go somewhere else to have your kid. But you don't. There's just hospitals. There's not places that you can go. Uh, medical. So, they took her child because they said she was uh, uh, positive for marijuana that's so dangerous so but if it was tobacco that's all right but uh <clears throat> which will kill your child but either ways uh and you know he uh he's been all down in the dumps about it and then so he's all telling me you know man that's bull that's bullshit that they can't tell you that you have to take prescription medication and the whole medical industry is a tyranny. I mean, the whole medical industry is a complete and total tyranny. And I've already read this before, and I'm, I'm going to have to go back because I've read ahead of that. But let's see here. We're talking about the medical industry and health. Yeah. In, in mid-2009, the World Health Organization... In the oh, no, that was different. Big Farm pays off. In surviving America's depression and de epidemic... Dr. Bruce Levine explains how the pharmaceuticals industry's psychological drug cartel works. Quote unquote, mental health treatment in the United States is now a multi billion dollar industry, and all the rules of industrial complexes apply. Not only does Big Pharma have influential psychiatrists in their pocket, pocket virtually, virtually every mental health institution from which doctors, the press, and the general public receive their mental health information is financially interconnected with Big Pharma. The American Psychiatric Association, psychiatry's professional organization, is hugely dependent on drug company grants, and this is also true for the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill and other so-called consumer organizations. Harvard and other prestigious university psych psychiatry departments take millions of dollars from drug companies. The National Institute of Mental Health funds researchers who are financially interconnected with drug companies. So when you get down to it at the end of the day, it's about getting you on drugs, okay? Especially if you got some legal situation, then they can really force it on you. And see, in my, in my situation, it wasn't just a suggestion. The doctor said, well, we're going to put you on drugs. And then, and, and how the legal situation, legal department even found out that I was on anything is beyond me because you're supposed to have, uh, patient-client uh, privileges. You're supposed to have uh, confidentiality, patient-client confidentiality. So I don't know how they even found out, but they all just run their mouth to each other about everything that goes on because they're a bunch of low-life pieces of shit. And uh, and that's all they do. That's all they had to do is run their mouth to each other about each other. And that's how they probably fucking slam each other for drugs so hard so they'll have something to talk about each other rather than run their own life. Because they don't, damn sure don't have any ambition out here. It's a fucking bunch of low life pieces of shit. A bunch of fucking low life motherfuckers. Smoking meth and just being the pieces of shit. And if they don't smoke meth, they're still pieces of shit. Just the fact they even live here shows they're pieces of shit. You can't live in Oklahoma and claim ambition because the fact that you live here proves otherwise. You're low life, white trash piece of shit. So, uh, 
go get your little food stamps. Anyways, but you know, uh, I got to get back to Texas and get my personal business back going off the ground because that's see that's what I've done in life. Live in a metropolitan area and run a business. I don't cling to the fucking white trash. Anyways, it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna go there. It's just a shitty place full of white trash and nobodies. And they claim it on the Bible, which is the opposite. And I'm not even gonna go there. Because apparently the opposite of tyranny is dangerous subject matter. You know, Jesus Christ was basically a political activist if you read the Bible and believe it. Not anything else. Just a political activist. Okay? I mean, mostly. Okay? So, you, you don't go there, you stupid piece of shit. And don't ever sit there and tell me that, uh, well, it's a Bible thumper is why you got so fucked up in that country. Or in that place. Or because that guy threw your way it was a Bible thumper. You're a piece of shit liar. You know? You know? You don't even read the Bible. You don't even know what it says. You go to church and, and listen to what that piece of shit tells you. You don't even crack the book. So don't sit there and tell me a fucking thing. I'm not going to go through it either. Because then you're going to get I can just feel your little excitement. You like, <laughs> little excitement. So it reminds me of that video that Psychic Pebbles did on Come 2012. You know, you see the little penis get erect in his pants and he, Yeah, Come 2012, come to get so, you know, you're shitting all over yourself. You know, what fucking direction is up? Fucking jackass. Oh, fuck, I'll go to Sutter Church. You know what, what it said in the Bible? What, what Christ said? Huh? You go, you go to church, you greet each other, you feel important. Or did that even ring a register in your stupid little fucking head? You think just because you went to church that made you biblical. You're a fucking idiot. So anyway, and I couldn't even, I see that was saying too much really. Because that I just felt the erections going on. I know these little lives are watching. Anyways, uh... This is the worst fucking place in the world. These fucking pieces of shit just fucking love thinking that there's something special. You are nothing. You understand that? Anyways, so... So, there you are, you jackass. So, so this kid, this piece of shit... He tells me, uh, well, so he calls up all his probation and shit, which I have not asked him to do, and if I had a chance, I would have asked him not to do it. Because I don't want him fucking my, with my shit and all these motherfuckers talking to each other. Well, he said, called him back and says, and this is the same motherfucker who had his child taken from him just the other day for marijuana. Calls me up and says, God, you little calls me up and says well if you don't take your prescription medication we're gonna have to consider it a relapse <laughs> and I'm like man I don't want to take no fucking prescription medication you know what I'll just fill the prescription and keep it and flush it down the toilet every day however much I'm supposed to be taking I'm not gonna take the fucking shit all right, I might take a chemical lobotomy. I'd rather, I'd rather spend, you know, five years of prison than take a chemical lobotomy for fucking one or two months, period. Because my brain is more important to me than that. I'd rather be able to think. You know, just the fact that, like, uh, Prozac is 94% fluoride, and, I mean, it just doesn't register with the stupid ass, because you claim it on the Bible. Because now you're, so I can already feel a power trip coming. I can feel it. I said too much. I've quoted the Bible. That was the biggest mistake. Because these motherfuckers are now, they're, they're like, they're floating. You know, this is like drugs to them. 
Like if you say anything about the Bible, they're float. I mean, they're 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 above it now. Oh shit, I'm above it now. I'm just gonna, that's what the Lord wants me to do this. Have you even read the fucking Bible? Or like the fact that Nazi Germany, the preamble to Nazi Germany, was fluoridating the water and, and, and instituting a medical pill, quote unquote. Mostly it's Nazi Germany is instituted under the guise of, to a large extent, psychiatry. Uh, a pill 90% fluoride, okay? And now we got one that's 94% fluoride? And I'm supposed to feel comfortable with your stupid shitty drugs? Because I'm smoking marijuana? A plant that grows naturally out of the ground. And it's proven fact causes fucking nothing but destroyed life for you to do that. And I'm supposed to sit here and feel good about it. So yeah, you feel all good about yourself. Ooh, yeah, the Bible. Like you know anything about the Bible. I mean, seriously, man. This, I mean, seriously, okay? And motherfuckers tell me you need to get your head out of the Bible. You know what? Shut up, okay? If I want to read that book, I'll read it. I read books. That's what I do. Okay? I take into consider uh, Asian facts. And, you know, I know exactly what it says, and there's nothing bad about it. Alright? What's done is all these people just sitting here saying, get all fucking important, and now you're too important because you read something. I mean, shit, man. Do you, I mean, how did you even, I don't think you read it. I mean, you went to your little institution, you felt like you were important. You did exactly what Jesus Christ said in the Bible. You went to the churches and the synagogues, you greeted each other, you loved it. You went to the marketplaces, your little Walmarts and your little and your little grocery stores, you greeted each other, you loved it, you were way too important for everybody then. You were at the church greeting, you were at the marketplace greeting. Oh shit, now it's time to fuck somebody off. And that's exactly what you're doing. Okay. I mean, you said that in the same stanza as, you know, lawyers. I mean, the the whole system falling apart. I mean, come on, man. You know, attorneys. You know, you know. You see the son of man coming, eating, drinking. You call them wine mover and club. I mean, all this shit. And then all in the. And then what else did you say? He who throws the first stone without sin, let him cast the first stone. This is a moral issue, right? This isn't a criminal issue, right? What was going on with that woman being a prostitute? That was a moral issue, right? Not a criminal issue. So in other words, get out of it. But that, but that made you feel important. So important that it was time to ruin lives on the, on the basis thereof. That's just the stupidest thing in the world to me. I don't give a shit how you feel about me. Fuck yourself. And, and it's like you can't level with these people. Once they, once you've quoted the Bible, you cannot level with them. It's over. Because now they're above you. Now they're above you. On the basis of the opposite. Of something that condemns you to hell. For the exact same thing. You're above it. I mean, it's just, that's why I read the Bible, because it's so amazing that that's exactly what happens. People get on up their little high horses, and now they want to cast a stone at somebody and stone them to death on a moral issue. Because you love being greeted. Because you think you're something. Well, you're not. And, you know, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of hearing about how you bump, bump, thump the Bible. I don't want to hear it. You don't thump shit. You need to get thumped in the head with a rock. You need to get your head crushed in. And I need to be the one doing it. And then you want to say, well, it's not of the, of the Lord to have a gun. Well, you know, Jesus Christ actually said in Luke, pick up the sword and bring it with us. You know, you saw the passion of Christ. You didn't read the Bible where he said, you know, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. It didn't say it was wrong. In Luke, he said, pick it up. Let's go. Because you need to get your ass run through. That's why you need to get murdered.
You know, according to the Drug Enforcement Administration, 4 million drug users in 1965, 2% of the overall po population, 112 in, in 2006, 46% of the overall population. And it just doesn't end. I mean, Netherlands, 1.5 homicide rate, United States, 5.6.